Hi, I'm Wally Emer. I'm the management co-chair of the Union Management Joint Reorganization Subcommittee. And I'm here with Ron Kerr, who's the union side co-chair. And the committee met last week, um, and one of the issues that we discussed was communications, and especially consistent communications throughout the agency, <coughs> which uh, stretches from Toad River to Tulel down to Victoria and all the way over to Wassa Lake. How do we get consistent, useful, accurate information out to everyone at the same time? And this um, interview with Jake Maslink and uh, with questions that were developed by the union side is one of the means that we thought would be useful at this time, right before Christmas, of ensuring that everybody knew where the reorganization process is and what will be coming in the future. Ron, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? I'd just like to reiterate what Wally has said, um, and that the primary purpose here today is to try and deal with some of the issues and concerns that have been raised by staff. Um, there's been a number of questions. There's been a, a fair amount of time that's lapsed between the last uh, communication from Jake, and we know that there'll be more time lapsing before the document goes out, and it does give us an opportunity to try and address some of the concerns of staff, and we hope to do that here today. Hi, I'm uh, Jake Maslink, as most of you know, the Assistant Deputy Minister for BC Parks. And I welcome this opportunity to uh, elaborate on where we're at with the reorganization through this question and answer situation. I've received some correspondence from a couple of regional offices, and I guess during the course of our conversation, we'll be addressing uh, the concerns raised in that correspondence as well as how I think we should be corresponding with one another on this subject. Um, Jake, I know we don't have a lot of time today, so I've um, actually prepared some, some questions, and I think we, within these questions we should capture some of the concerns of staff. My first question is, although you have outlined in the proposed BC Park structure in recent memos and indicated that the document would not be available until mid-January, the time between those two activities has created a lot of unrest among staff. Many staff feel that there has been an unnecessary delay in implementing the plan. Can you explain what has caused that delay? Um, yes, I'd be happy to. I guess at the outset, uh, I did not foresee some of the events that would happen uh, to us in the latter part of this year. Um, and I'll outline some of the events that have affected uh, the delay. The other thing that I could not foresee was the manner in which this participatory process with staff uh, being involved in the uh, reorganization review uh, and proposal, um, how that would be managed and how that would come out. I have decided to uh, become personally involved in the rewriting of the document. And that's going to take some time. Because as I mentioned, there are some things that have impacted on the time I had available. And some of these things are, for instance, the budget um, uh, preparation for next year. Around the ministry executive table, um, I'm the only parks representative. And we're dealing with some fairly serious budget considerations, uh, ministry-wide, government-wide. And to uh, be able to respond in a corporate manner at the uh, executive table uh, has taken a lot of my time, um, because we have to look at trade-offs between various programs um, with an anticipated reduced budget next year. Also, the matter in which we're going to be dealing with possible cutbacks in parks. Do we close parks? That wasn't politically ex acceptable last year. So how do we deal with reduced budgets? Still maintain standards in our, in our flagship parks and deliver on the protected area strategy. The second major issue that has impacted on my time has been the protected area strategy within the context of the land use planning process that's evolving within the province. That hasn't been very clear, 
and uh, has required a lot of inter-ministry as well as within the ministry discussions and consultations. That's taken an enormous amount of my time. Um, a third issue that is, has really impacted on me personally is uh, a complaint to the Ombudsman on the Cypress Bowl uh, operation, where a report was uh, made public showing us to have operated very unfairly. I took that personally because I think it's an indictment on the integrity of our park agency and one on myself. And I found the report unacceptable and have had to challenge the, deputy, uh, the um, Ombudsman's Office on that. A second report from the Ombudsman's Office was uh, erroneously, it, it was uh, made public to the operator at Cyprus without us receiving a copy, and I'm advised without seeing it that that's even more negative in terms of uh, uh, us dealing fairly with the operator there. Um, so I've spent a lot of time with George Trachuk and Ray Peterson and the Ombudsman's Office and the Deputy Minister on that issue. And in addition to that, there are a number of uh, other items that have impacted on my time, but I just wanted to, to uh, uh, sketch that out that as we are proceeding with the review of the reorganization document, um, it's business as usual and my priorities have to be assigned to those things that are going to impact us immediately. Based on all of that, uh, those things happening, Jake, um, do you feel that the document will in fact be ready by mid-January? And, and if it is, um, what are going to be the follow-up steps after that to, uh, as far as implementation is concerned? I guess, Ron, it's, it's my hope that we will have something out in, in mid-January. Uh, my preoccupation, I guess, is with coming out with a document that uh, clearly identifies where we're going and how we should be structured. That, I guess, comes ahead of meeting a timeline for me, but I will do my utmost to meet the timeline. You should be aware that um, the, the Deputy Ministry is also reviewing the manner in which our ministry is, is uh, structured. He's met once with the executive committee members of the ministry uh, on an individual basis, and I understand he's planning to do that again very soon with a notion of what he has in mind for the ministry. And it's within the ministry context that we're going to have to um, uh, present to him our proposed organizational structure but I will definitely do whatever I can to have a document by the middle of January. Taking those things into consideration and, and assuming that we will get a document in January, uh, what would the follow-up steps be after that? Right. Um, I intend to take the document that, that I'm personally now uh, rewriting with Nancy Latkeman. I intend to take that first to PMC, uh, the Park Management Committee, and then to the Deputy Minister to ensure that I'm not out of sync with where he plans to take the, the, uh, the ministry. And then it will be sent out to staff for response. I'm committed to going around to staff with the committee that I'd outlined before, yourself, uh, Sylvia Forsyth, and the appropriate director for the area in question. And so, um, and how we then come to terms with the, the staff feedback is something that I haven't really come to terms uh, with, you know, what, what that form will take. But that's what I intend to do. I've got to first take it to the deputy and then it'll go to staff. Okay, thank you.
As a point of confirmation, Jake, is the model that PMC is addressing the three region 13 district model, including staffing details that were presented at the manage, to the managers at the Richmond meeting? Um, at the Richmond meeting, I think we presented either 10 or 11 districts. Um, but in my last memo to staff, I was very clear as to the organizational model that we were now um, trying to flesh out, which has two units at headquarters. It does retain a regional component, but the regional component consists, if I recall, of uh, systems planning and master planning uh, for uh, for admin and finance and admin, there would be uh, services maintained, and there would also be a function related to um, facility construction and repair. And that would be, we foresaw that to be a construction superintendent single position. And 13 districts. I think that's what I spelled out. And that's what we're pursuing right now. But what I would like to uh, do at this point, Ron, is maybe sketch out and put the whole thing into a framework that I'm mentally walking around with, if that's sure. okay. Yeah. And I've drawn this on the uh, board here, and I hope the camera will pick it up. Uh, this is just a schematic, fairly simplified diagram, where what I'm doing is looking at where our key outputs are. First of all, we're here to serve government, and government is, is uh, re uh, represented by the premier, ministers, MLAs, and deputy ministers. So th those are our key customers. At the other end, our key output is serving the public in our parks and ecological reserves, and close to that, managing the individual units, the park and ecological reserve units. So those are our two primary outputs that this organization has to deliver on. So to serve government, we need a Victoria office. And some of the things that this Victoria office puts together for upward delivery are things like new initiatives, the protected area strategy, this agency can take full credit for putting into place government-wide. It's one of the strategic priorities of government. And we're into this up to our eyeballs. Coming out of this protected, uh, protected area strategy are new proposals. For instance, the, Tat and uh, the establishment of the Tatch and Shini, and everything that this entails negotiations with the local Aboriginal people, discussions with the Americans and with Ottawa on the manner in which we're going to manage this area, and a host of other requirements. Policy advice. If, again, if I can use the Tatch and Shini uh, as a case in point, one of the things we have to come to terms with in the whole protected area strategy as it's being put in place is the expropriation of mineral claims. Uh, forest licenses and other encumbrances. We're talking in the Tachinchini in terms of over $30 million potentially in compensation. And right now uh, we're working with the Ministry of the Attorney Generals and the Ministry of en Energy, Mines and Petroleum Resources as to what kind of a policy advice are we going to give government on that whole issue of expropriation. Um, another policy issue related to pass, and I'm just picking up a couple of the things that we're doing, is the business of the legislation that's required um, to manage the whole protected area system once it's in place. Because potentially you have fish and wildlife managing, uh, wildlife management areas under that system, the Forest Service managing wilderness areas under that system. Um, what kind of legislation do we need? A, do we need an umbrella piece of legislation that links all of these member um, areas together? And so we're front and center on that as well. And then, of course, there are financial issues, as we all know. 
there are clawbacks from time to time. Uh, how do we manage that on behalf of the agency to, to provide government with the advice and resources it needs back in that case? Or in terms of what I just talked about in terms of budget, what is it that we present the government to say, hey, if you give us this much, these are the implications. If you give us less, these are the implications. So that the government can make informed decisions on the program that we manage. There are other things like uh, amendments to legislation and regulations. Uh, there's a minor amendment going forward next legislative session to amend a boundary of Cape Scott Park. Uh, regulations affecting the fees, uh, affecting the manner in which the, we can uh, uh, charge people for trespassing. There are various projects that we require government approval on, or government direction on, or are given government direction on. Uh, park transfers uh, is one. Um, some of the new initiatives that we've been ad advised we need to put together for government to consider is something akin to a youth group program for next year, and those sorts of things. And then there is the plethora of briefing notes, draft letters. That is a daily um, diet, I guess, of Victoria with the assistance. And all of this isn't done in Victoria in isolation with, with the rest of the organization. But Victoria puts the final package together with the participation of the whole organization. Then there is the service that Victoria provides to the districts, the regions, and the service that the districts and regions provide back up to Victoria for us to meet these two ends. It's operating policies and priorities with regards to the administration of the whole parks program. Allocation of budgets and reallocation of budgets. Activities requiring government approval. We, you know, there are times when, when we initiate things in the field that we need to go up the ladder to find, is this OK, um, before we push it any further or before we put a public profile on it. Advice. Districts and regions will ask advice from Victoria. Victoria will be asking advice from regions and districts on the various issues. So it's a two-way thing. And information reporting. And that, too, is a two-way issue. Uh, you know, how are things going? Gets reported up. And what are the expectations? And what are we anticipating needs to be uh, communicated back to the delivery end? At the district level, as I mentioned, is where the service to the public takes place within our parks. And the district are totally responsible for how well our parks are managed and protected. So it's within that context, Ron, that I want to illustrate what, what the reorg is all about. Now that our finances are, are really being um, crimped, uh, we can expect major expansion of the system. So how do we come to terms with that? And then I feel we need to continue to serve this end well and that end well. And how do we do that? How do we do that in terms of making sure that we don't duplicate unnecessarily? And then I go back and sort of reflect on the way I manage, because I'm directly impacted in this area, and I find myself going directly to managers, either in Victoria or the district. Uh, and I find that rather interesting, you know, in terms of the organization that we're in, that we don't necessarily have the time to go through all the loops that we have in place right now, and we need to really look to see what are we holding people accountable for? What are we paying people for? And how do we work better and in a more streamlined fashion? And I need to personally take myself through this document and put, project myself into these various offices and into the various positions in the agency to try and get an understanding of it. And by the way, that's also part of the reason there is a delay, because 
I'm not about to put out a, a document that I don't fully understand myself. Okay, so I, I hope I've addressed uh, your question. Thank you. Jake, the, the last answer that you gave us ties in very well with the next question that I think is a major concern to a lot of people. Um, the proposed changes, um, pardon me, in another way, another issue that staff have raised is the proposed changes to the way BC Parks is doing business. Many staff feel that we do and have changed with the times over the years. They feel we are, are always making adjustments, we're always seen to be downsizing, uh, we always appear or, or need to be doing more for, for less, uh, yet it doesn't appear to have helped the staff or the organization. Um, is BC Parks going to be doing business in a different way? And how will it differ from what we're doing now? And what will the benefits or the advantages be? OK, that's, that's a question that I could spend a lot of time on. And I'm just reflecting on, uh, on just the last few months at the ministry budget discussions. And we as an agency, you're right, have, have made changes and as, uh, as an agency, we've made changes. And as an agency, we will continue to make changes. And that has stood us in very good stead. Because I can look anyone in the eye and say, we are the most efficiently operated park agency that I know of in Canada. And if anyone can demonstrate to me how we can operate even more effectively, I'm all ears. And the feedback I've received from the deputy minister is that we run a very good agency and that we are effective stewards, not just of the park resources, the ecological reserves, but also of, of the way that we manage our uh, financial um, end. And the manner in which we maintain flexibility, anticipating possible shortfalls that we have to react to. And I think we as an agency have managed well in terms of remaining flexible. But that means, in my mind, that we continue to do so. And um, as I mentioned you know, to you, using that diagram on the board, um, I'm now projecting ahead and saying, what if the park system expands by 50%, which is most likely, or maybe 100% which could also happen if this government achieves its goal of doubling the parks and wilderness areas for this province and makes this agency accountable for the management of these, these units. Um, then we have to come to terms with how do we manage with less resources in a competent fashion. And that means that what's happening today is going to happen, I think, in the future much more so, that people are going directly to the area of responsibility for um, action. And for instance, uh, I now find that uh, with the minister's office. They access directors directly. And I'm kept informed as to what's happening, and the directors are responding directly uh, in many instances and where they find that perhaps a more corporate response is required, they come through me. When the minister or deputy minister comes to me with a certain issue in a park or ecological reserve, I cut right through the organization, directly uh, address the district manager uh, involved, and either instruct him or get advice from him on the way that we should be uh, uh, addressing the issue that's been raised. Um, the, the district manager, in turn, then informs his regional director. I think what we'll need, and that's my view at this time, and I want to look through this over the Christmas holidays in this, this reorganizational structure, is how, how do we place more resources more effectively in, at the district level, have the competency there to address things, have the people there effectively informed within the context of, of us as an agency. 
Um, and I think we will be doing business in a different way in, in, that, in that respect, where, where people are not only given responsibility, but the necessary authority to carry out their responsibility and the accountability to the rest of the organization. Um, if I can just carry on for just a second longer on this, if I look at the organization right now, we seem to be preoccupied with the unit that we work in rather than the agency that we represent. And this may come strangely to some folks, but I find very often that people tend to relate more strongly to their unit, either being within southern interior, interior region or south coast region or northern British Columbia region, rather than, hey, we're one agency. And uh, we don't report necessarily to a regional director. No, we report on behalf of the agency as a whole. And that's the sort of thing that I will personally want to see in place, that we think corporately and act locally. Further to comments on the model, Jake, there's been a lot of concern raised regarding your consultation with headquarters directors and managers about the reporting relation, how the reporting relationship will work with the new model. Can you explain why field managers were not consulted at this stage uh, of the reorganization? Um, yeah, I have no difficulty doing that. Uh, at our Richmond meeting, uh, one of the constraints I put on Victoria was to try and limit the Victoria office to 50 FTEs. And I think it was Derek Thompson snuck an extra five FTEs into that complement at 55. The reason I did that is because I wanted to really put stress on all of us to see where we really needed the staff allocations. I've now received a lot of feedback from various people and what I need to come to terms with, with the headquarters director and with the headquarters managers, first of all, is what do we require in terms of resources to deliver to government, to the deputy minister, to our minister, MLAs, from the Victoria end of things as things are developing right now within the ministry and within government service. Secondly, what resources do we need to have in Victoria to respond to the field? Because if we're going to the kind of organizational model that I've sketched out, then we're going to have to be very responsive in Victoria. I think much more responsive than we've been. And I need to sit down directly with the headquarters managers to um, address that. Um, I have a pretty good idea of what things are in the field. And when I come out with the next uh, iteration of the report, that's when we'll be dealing with the field uh, managers. Thank you. The next question is, um about postings or new positions, and this is an issue that has raised a lot of concern among staff. Um, although there was not any formal direction from PMC to hold or fill vacancies by secondment, uh, the union side of the subcommittee has requested and in fact recommended uh, that we take that approach. Uh, staff have assumed that that position would be taken by management to, to reduce the impact on staff as a result of the reorganization. Would you explain to staff why all positions cannot be held in abeyance or filled by secondment until after the reorganization has been implemented? And specifically, what will be done about the following positions? Uh, the facilities officer, headquarters, the information clerk, headquarters, planning position, Vancouver Island, resource management officer in northern BC, uh, clerk three position in Strathcona, planning position in the Kootenays, and the area supervisor position in the Malahat. I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> but the, uh, the issue may be somewhat academic right now um, in that the deputy minister has put a total staff freeze in place for the ministry effective uh, last week, Friday. 
And that was in anticipation of a worst case scenario in terms of next year's budget. We don't want to be in a position to hire people into the ministry if our budget next year is such that we may have to lay them off. Um, so one of the things that we're committed to as a ministry, you know, is to try and safeguard the positions occupied or the, the, the employees currently serving the ministry. Um, generally, our intent is to try and maintain as much flexibility in the organization as possible by not filling positions on a permanent basis until the reorganization um, model has been approved and, and in place uh, so that we can then use that you know, to, to place people. There are certain positions that we've identified as being critical uh, that need to move forward. Uh, one of those is, well, if I look at the facility officer, uh, that was considered to be critical. I think that's caught up now in the freeze. Um, and we'll see what happens to that. So I can't tell you if that's going to f be filled or not. Uh, I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. The information clerk at headquarters, we're in a situation there where um, the person filling that position um, has, uh, has been uh, in an auxiliary uh, position for some time and will become a regular uh, employee. Um, and we thought it was appropriate that, that we advertise the position so it, it is one within the context of the um, union agreement. Uh, the planning position in Vancouver Island, we've just learned from uh, the central bureaucracy, whatever they're called today, that um, uh, we cannot limit uh, the uh, postings to BC parks and it's now caught up in the staff freeze, and if we want to fill it, it will be through secondment. The resource management officer in Prince George, uh, I was given uh, the advice uh, that we were looking for someone outside the organization uh, to effectively fill that position, and that's why it went forward. I think the hope was to attract a qualified person uh, from the First Nations community. Uh, that position is currently also caught up in the freeze, although I, I'm prepared to, to ask the deputy to make an exception and proceed with that. The clerk three position in Strathcona uh, involves an individual who left, who resigned from that position, I understand, to deal with personal issues at home and has now asked to be reinstated. Uh, the period of reinstatement uh, has gone, and in fairness to that individual, we thought it best to advertise that position and give that individual an opportunity to reclaim that position through the comp competition process. So that's an exception issue. Uh, the planning position in the Kootenays, I believe, is, is intended to go ahead as a secondment issue. Uh, the area supervisor in the Malahat, I understand, is also being posted as a secondment, um, as is the assistant planning position that Karen Lewis occupies here in Victoria. I believe that's also. But our intent, the long and the short of it, is yes, we want to retain the flexibility and try and fill the positions with secondments. The problem with that, of course, is that we now have so many people seconded that is becoming a very confused issue, and we need to come to terms with that in the new year. Oh. Thank you. Further to uh, staff concerns about uh, filling positions and other related issues about the reorganization, um, you've received a number of written comments from groups representing staff across the province. How will you be re responding to those submissions? Yeah, I've received uh, two um, letters from staff, um, I guess as a collective letter. Uh, one from the Southern Interior Regional Office that was unsigned, and I have a policy that uh, if I don't see a signature on a, on a letter, that I don't know who I'm dealing with or whether or how seriously to take the letter. And so I have I've just decided not to respond to that. 
I received a similar letter from the South Coast Regional Office that had uh, the signatures of uh, all of the regional office staff, I believe, on it. And uh, it's something that I discussed with the uh, union management uh, subcommittee. And uh, I think this is the best way in which to respond to those issues. But I should point out that in my last communication, I asked people to communicate with their director or with Nancy Letkeman, because I'm not in a position to respond to individual letters from groups or individuals and thereby inadvertently find myself um, not consistently communicating to everyone on the issues. And I think this forum uh, of using a video, you know, uh, hopefully addresses the common questions people have uh, and they receive a consistent response from me on this. Um, much of the feedback that the subcommittee has received from staff relates to an inconsistent interpretation uh, to the information that has been sent out. Can you explain why there may be conflicting interpretations of the memos that you've been sending out and how that might be avoided? Well, I'm not sure I can give you an explanation, but I, I think what's happening is that everyone views the organization and the way we do our business and the way that we're talking about restructuring our organization, I think everyone views it from a different perspective. And so, um, if I can use the analogy, everyone uses a different set of glasses uh, to look through. And um, it's very difficult to try and communicate very clearly and crisply what it is that we're trying to put in place without people uh, providing it with their own interpretations. And I think that's a natural kind of thing. I don't know how to avoid that. I think, again, using a video a series of questions and answers, uh, as we're doing right now, would be a good method. Um, and I guess that's, I, I otherwise, I, I don't know. But I, I do know that within the, the, uh, the whole process, we do not have consensus, and we never will have. I don't have it around PMC, and I don't expect we'll have consensus within the organization on, on the process or on the vision that we have. Um, but through discussions, hopefully, that'll come into focus. Wally, the, my last question is basically for you. Um, and as co-chairman for the subcommittee, you and I know that communications from the committee to staff has not been as good as it could be. Some time ago, we talked about an electronic bulletin board as a means of bridging that gap with staff to provide consistent answers to questions that may arise. Can you explain where we are with the bulletin board and how it might work in the future? Sure. Um, when we originally came up with the idea of a bulletin board that would be inexpensive and could be ac accessed by anybody with uh, basically a vax mail or all-in-one ID, um, according to BCSC, it was a new technology and it was quite simple and it could be up and running in a week. Um, it's taken about five times longer than that. <laughs> because, in fact, there were some technical glitches. I don't understand what the glitches were. All I know is that we were pushing and nothing was coming out the other end. It is up now, and um, there's material going out to staff. I think even as we speak, it'll be going out early this week. Um, and it will be, uh, the committee's minutes will be there, and then also we're going to try an experiment in that if staff do have questions, um, they can send them in to either yourself or myself or perhaps indirectly through one of the committee members to you and I. And then if um, the question is such as most of them or perhaps all of them will be that the question could be asked and the, an the answer would be of interest to other people in the organization, we'll put the question, attributed to the individual or not, depending whether they want privacy, and we'll put the answer on the bulletin board. And the bulletin board is there for everybody to see the question and every more important perhaps everyone to see the answer. And the bulletin board is cheap. It's got an odd name. It's called Parks Gopher. I don't know why it's a gopher, but gophers were cheaper than the other bulletin board, so we <laughs> got a gopher. And it costs about a cent a, uh, an access. In other words, you can go in, read the messages, and get out, and it costs us about a cent. And I think that's very cost of, it's potentially very cost effective, and uh, I hope it helps. It's an experiment, 
and some experiments work and some don't. But um, I think it has the uh, potential of getting information from the committee, which is both union and management together, to all staff quickly, consistently across the province. Good. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to uh, like to thank Jake and Wally for the for the time that they've um, given us to answer some of these questions. I know that there's a lot of concerns out there from staff, and and hopefully this video will be able to alleviate some of those concerns. There's there's no way that we're going to answer everybody's questions, um, but we, um, as Wally has pointed out, with getting the bulletin board up and running, I think that that's one way that we can deal with it. Um, I would like to reiterate how pleased I am that, that Jake and Wally have been able to give us some time today to talk to you directly. Um, and I would just also like to say that I think most people recognize that management has the right to manage and, and reorganization is part of that. And as chairman of the subcommittee, basically our role is to try and make that, um, that reorganization or that move from one element of the way we're doing business to another um, as smooth as possible. Um, and with that, thank you very much, Jake. Uh, thank you, Ron, for the opportunity, uh, you know, to, to have this discussion. I would like to say in summary, though, that the reorganization document that I'm preparing um, for review by PMC in January is done within, and, and I think everyone should know this, what I'm trying to do is project myself into the position of everyone that may be directly affected by it. And that's what's taking some of the time. But I'm very concerned that the people who have served this agency well are not overlooked in the process of reorganizing. That is a commitment that I have. Also within the ministry restructuring, if that's going to take place, I want to safeguard the reputation and the I guess profile and capability of this organization to deliver well into the future with the kind of people that we currently have on board. And so you should understand that it's within that context that I'm seriously uh, wrestling with this reorganization issue. Thank you again, Ron, for this.